Welcome to the show. <laughs> this is Amanda Barr, and I'm so excited today. We have two incredible guests, two shifters that are doing great things in this world. And I'm going to open up the show with a little description about what they're doing. I've got Laurel and Con Akiri Conley as vision experts with a passion for revolutionizing vision and purpose. Carrie and Laurel's mission stems from their own adversity of losing two family members. The goal of this amazing mother-daughter team is to teach people of all ages the importance of having a crystal clear vision and creating a legacy they wish to carry out. Welcome to the show, Carrie and Laurel. Thanks for Thank having you. Us. We're Party. excited to be here. Yeah, and I just want to dive in. If you can share a little bit more about yourselves and how you got to where you are today. So I am Carrie Conley, obviously, and I've been an entrepreneur for over 25 years, and I have wanted to teach vision to people for a very, very long time. When I was about my daughter's age, my mid-20s, I was encouraged by my first mentor to sit down and write out in crystal clear detail what I wanted my life to look like because I was not doing the nine to five gig very well. <laughs> and I think most entrepreneurs feel the same way, right? They just... We are told to, you know, get the, get the degrees, get the job, work up the ladder. And I just wasn't doing that um, very happily. So she said, you know what? You can create your life to be whatever you want to be. You just need to sit down and get really clear on what that is. And so I did that, wrote it all out on legal pads of paper. And I still follow that today and have now been teaching this for, like I said, over 25 years to entrepreneurs. Now, Laurel and I teach this to young adults. And I'm sure she'll talk about that. And we just are very, very passionate about creating a whole new generation of people living their life on purpose. Love it. I love it. Laurel, maybe share a little bit more. Obviously, your mom has been doing this for a while and it's incredible. And I can't wait to get into the details soon. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, you know, of course, I grew up around it and saw her teaching vision kind of more in an entrepreneurial setting most of the time, you know, teaching it to uh, mostly female business owners, not always, but um, it didn't really come into play in my life as much um, until we had lost my dad and brother three years apart. Um, and it started to kind of take this new shape of, you know, always knowing that vision was important in your life beyond just your business, but it kind of took a breath of how we were sharing that. Um, and so I stepped into being a partner with my mom after we experienced those loss and realizing that we wanted to coach people together. And I kind of came into coaching young adults, you know, more of my generation of having a vision for their life, maybe their business too, if they have that piece of it. But we wanted to offer hope to people and to be, we hope, an inspiration through what we've been through and, and giving people tangible ways to set an anchor in their life when they do have adversity. Um, so it kind of took a different shape when I stepped into it and and reaching some more people in, in different areas of their life as well. Yeah. And your story, I know like when I first talked to you guys and I heard your story, I was like, I have to share it because you guys have gone through a lot. And I know you mentioned it and condol condolences to you both, but you guys actually from losing, um, you know, your dad, your husband and your brother, you wrote a book. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Just because I know a lot of people in the last year, two years, a lot of people have lost people and mm. it's tough to go through that stuff. And yeah. um, and you guys are talking about vision and purpose today. And how can you go through a, such a hard time mm. and be able to come through that? So maybe if you can share a little bit more, that'd mm -hmm. be great. Yeah. So when we got to the point of, it was about five years after losing my dad and then two after my brother, since their, their deaths were three years apart, that we were realizing the conversations that we were having were becoming very similar in different ways of, you know, having conversations with people that were grieving either a loss of a loved one, maybe a loss of a marriage, you know, whatever. We grieve loss in all forms, right? And we started to realize that we were offering as much advice as we could, um, you know, just from our own experience, experiences, but we were realizing too that it was healing us along the way. Mm -hmm. And so we came to a point where we thought, okay, well, we want to talk to more people without talking to more people. And so how do we do that? So we put our story onto paper um, and we didn't want it to just be, here's our story, do with it what you will. We wanted to say, here's our story and here's how we've come through that and to create tangible ways that people can work through the grief. You know, we're not experts or counselors or anything. It's just us sharing what we've been through and also offering 
the piece that brought us through it, the perspective and having that vision. So we, we give what we can and then we just kind of let people take take what they get out of the book and, and use it in their own life. Awesome. And Carrie, do you want to add anything to that since you yeah. wrote that with her? Yes, it was quite a journey, obviously. Um, you know, we lost both of them to suicide, which is really a challenge on top of just loss. Um, and there's so many people that are dealing with um, losses in this way, or they're dealing with their own anxiety, depression, whatever. They're trying to help other people and they don't know what to do. So like Laurel said, you know, we tell our story briefly at the beginning of the book, but really it's 11 chapters of what we learned from in the journey that helped us get through it. And most especially like Laurel touched on, it's our perspective on life that um, we very much have a heavenly perspective. And we know that however tragic this is or however tragic somebody else's adversity to be, that there is always a purpose in it. And we just have to choose that perspective every single day because without it, people drift really easily. Mm -hmm. And as Laurel said, you know, we aren't, we aren't trained in any way to, um, you know, be counselors or, or any of that. All we know to do is to give people hope. And the way that we give people hope is to point them in the direction of knowing that they matter and that they need to just get really, really clear on a vision for their life. Awesome. Awesome. You're doing life work, <laughs> light work and life work with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's incredible. So get their book. What's the name of the book again? So they can find it. Yeah, it's entitled Keep Looking Up. Keep Looking Up. Yeah. So go get it, especially if you're going through stuff or just want to be inspired by their journey. And I'd love to dive in. It's all about finding vision today. So can you please, Carrie, I want to, I'm going to come to you. What is vision? I know that a lot of people will say the word vision and people talking about it in business and in life, but sometimes I think we, it feels like vision so far away from us that it's like, what is it really? So when you guys talk about vision, what is it? What's vision? Yeah, that is the very first thing I do when I do a workshop or um, an event is I talk first about what vision is and the degree that I take it to. So, you know, everybody knows what vision is. It's just kind of this thing you've got rolling around in your head of what you're dreaming about, what your you just what your desires are, right? And most people, it just stays here. It stays inside their head, and it's not a great place to leave it because, unfortunately, there's a lot of negative stuff in there as well that are kind of like weeds to the dream, right? kind of kills it off. So what I ask people to do is get it out onto paper like I did um, all those years ago in crystal clear detail in every area of their life. Um, and what I get them to do, Amanda, is I, I use a target date. So I ask them to think, to write on this piece of paper. The first thing is the date is if it's three years from that day. And then right after that date, write how old they will be and how old their family members will be and close friends, colleagues, everybody who's you're allowing to be involved in your dream and in your vision, mm. because time and age is non-negotiable, right? So it brings it in. Like you said, it's always kind of out there for people. When I get them to write that and see ages, you can see their, the light bulb go off going, wow, mm. there's a lot that I wanna make happen before I am that old or I'm, my kids are that old or whatever. And it starts bringing it down so that they can take it and put target goals with dates on paper as well so that they can work towards that. They kind of reverse engineer the plan, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it gets a little bit more tactical, if that's the right word to use, something that they can really um, set some daily bite-sized goals around. So if I understand, it's vision for your life, um, not so much. So some some people, when you think about vision, they'll say, I have a mission and a vision for my company. So you're mm -hmm. working with people on their vision for life. And and does it also tell into the business as well? Very much so, because like Laura mentioned, I, I end up working with a lot of entrepreneurs and um, and they they're woven together. You can't set with an entrepreneur. You can't separate out work and life. It's the same thing. Right. So they very much weave into each other because if they write out things like um, lifestyle, you know, homes, maybe second homes, whatever, paying off debt, um, helping family members, that all involves where's the money coming from to fund that. Mm -hmm. So we have to talk a lot about the business and the career as well. Awesome. Laurel, do you want to share any extra to that um, vision and what does it mean and the difference of vision and mission? 
Yeah, um, I talk a lot about how vision helps with decision making. Um, some people are quick to make decisions, whether that's just because they don't want to think on it or they have a really hard time making decisions because there's no guidance of what direction they're supposed to be going. And so it becomes this thing that when you're either faced with a large decision or a small decision, you always ask, does it line up with my vision? Is this money that I'm about to invest going to take me to that place? Are these people that I'm about to spend time with, you know, understanding my vision and going to be those people that I wrote down that I want to be surrounded with. It becomes this, this roadmap to everything that you do in your life. Because if you're making all these decisions along the way that are keeping you from going towards that vision, you're never going to get there. And so a lot of times when people are really undecisive, it's because they're really unclear about where they're going. Mm -hmm. And so if they're very aware of it, they can sit down and say, okay, well, I know I'm not supposed to be doing that because it doesn't make sense for what I see for my future. Um, and I think for young adults, especially, we're always up until the point of becoming adults, if you will, the adult life after college or after high school, wherever that falls in their life, our decisions are made for us most of the time. You know, we're going to this next grade. You know, there's some of our own decisions in there, but they get thrown into this adult life and they're like, OK, what do I do now? I don't know how to make these big decisions on my own because it's been this consistent path. And so trying to teach young adults that now of you can decide what you're about to do and what you want to do and what you want your life to look like. It's very free. Right. I love that. I love that. And you have a group, right, called Viva. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that since it's a good segue since you are working yeah. with younger adults and about vision and really harnessing mm -hmm. that? Um, so maybe if you could share a little. Yeah, so we wanted to create a program that was kind of like a life school without putting the word school attached to it because a lot of people don't like school. So it's Academy. So it's Vision is Victory Academy. And we wanted to fill some educational gaps. So, of course, vision, talking a lot about purpose, which are very much hand in hand, you know, with your vision and your purpose, it kind of works together. And then also filling some other spaces of identifying what self-care looks like. We just talked about this last week and it was interesting the light bulbs that people had of what self-care meant to them because a lot of times we were joking that we thought, oh, it meant getting a massage or it meant this. And for each people on the call, they identified it was something different for them and they didn't realize that was self-care in their life. Um, and then we've also been talking about building wealth. I think this is a big missing piece too. And this can also piece together with vision of if people realize they want to be an entrepreneur, they don't always have the financial education of what that looks like to be investing and to be building that wealth. So it's an academy of filling some gaps that we thought maybe need to be brought in at a younger age so that they can move into the future knowing those skills. And is that a weekly, um, do, do they come in weekly or is it a program for like 10 weeks long or how does, how is it structured? So those listening yeah. um, either live or, or afterwards, they can kind of mm -hmm. understand how could they potentially get involved or, you know, be a part of this Viva program, Academy. Academy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This first year has been um, the year that we've been doing it live. So the group that's going through this year has been on these live calls and we've been putting all the recordings into modules. Mm, so we meet nice. every other week on these live calls and then it will become an evergreen thing. So if anyone comes in, like we had someone join just a month ago, she got all the past recordings and then is going to be a part of the live ones through this year. So it'll always be there and we'll be sure to always connect even when it does become this recorded package. We'll be sure to always have some form of live call so that we can connect with whoever's in the academy. Awesome. So it's a full year program, if I understand it. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Lots of content. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And Carrie, do you want to add anything to that? I know that you've been in this space for a while, helping people find their vision and purpose. And now you've got Viva working with your daughter. So maybe share a little bit about your experience of this as well. Uh, yeah, so I my part in Viva is bringing in the trainers on these subjects that we've decided we wanted to bring to them. And you know, what's interesting is Laurel and I did some focus groups with some young adults before we launched Viva to find out what it is that they really wanted. Mm -hmm. And she already talked about the topics. And my ex my part in this, because I've been around for a while, is I know a lot of people who are experts in those areas. So we bring those experts in and they have willingly come in saying, yes, I will absolutely come in and serve these young adults. Laurel and I um, 
really focus on speaking and getting out there and, and being able to talk about vision and purpose so that we can educate people about Viva. And what ends up happening for me is I still uh, end up doing uh, group work as well with entrepreneurs to help them build their businesses. I end up attracting a lot of what I call people who are running really expensive hobbies that want to turn it into a really money-making business because unfortunately most people when they start a business um, don't have that vision and they don't have a roadmap to follow. And so they end up again, you know, leaking money <laughs> instead of learning how to set some target dates with some income producing activity. So that's my area of expertise aside from Viva. Now, when, you know, you're, it's so great. You said that expensive hobbies. And as my husband said, when I first started my business, are we running a nonprofit or are we running a pro for profit business? Um, so when you're working with these entrepreneurs or these young adults and you're looking at this vision, how do you know? Cause I think there's sometimes this self doubt that I know my vision is my vision. So when, at what point are you like, that person just knows it and they can just run and it's so solid for them. How do you get to that point with people? You know, when they, when they write their vision, when Amanda, when they take the exercise seriously and they write it out, um, a lot gets revealed to them. And like Laurel said, it's a really good gauge for decision-making because at that moment they can look at that three years out and see what they want to create. And either they can see right now that they're on track or they can see where they've got to make some ch big changes. And with that comes a lot of fear and a lot of doubt. So when we take people through um, the vision work, the next thing we work on is what are those things that you're telling yourself that aren't serving you anymore? The stories, right? Mm. Because we all have them. And it's what's it's what I what I call the wall between you and the vision. And we all have the walls. When I first started as an entrepreneur and I was pregnant with Laurel, um, there were all these walls that I had to, that I was hitting. And the only way that I could get up over the wall or through the wall was that my vision was bigger than whatever the, the obstacle was. Right. And that's the magic. That's what people don't realize is that they set these big goals, not addressing and not breaking down the wall that they need to break through. And the only way they're going to have the strength to do that is to have something so big and so beautiful that they want so bad that they're going to get through, you know, all the adversity and all the doubt and all the fear. But every time you get up over a wall, you get stronger for the next one. So we just keep talking out when I work with my clients and we work with the people in Viva, we talk about the stories and, you know, what's going on up here that we need to change. So it's a mixture of declaring what you want and then also what you're struggling with and how to overcome that whenever right. you face it, whatever, whatever might come in your way. So of course, my next question is what are your, both of your visions? You guys work together, but you also have independent things you are doing. So if you could share your vision, I'd love to kind of see, just share with us. Cause I love it. I'm so fascinated by just the world of this vision and how strong it can be and how much sometimes we just blow past it and we just go, well, I just am going to set these goals and make it happen. But that vision and the power behind it, maybe Laurel, take it away. What's your vision? I was like, who, who's starting? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what we do with people is we ask them to do the three year out situation, right? And it's something that we always talk about revisiting it each year, because a lot of times those details become a lot more clear. And so where I'm at presently, for three years for me, I'm going to be 30 years old. And so maybe that's a big year for some people. It just kind of marks that special occasion. But you know, what I've always had on my vision and something that came to fruition this last year and is still remaining true and even more detailed out is having flexibility to be present in my kids' life. And I say kids because at the point of being 30, I hope to have another. I do have an almost one-year-old. But making sure that I have that balance and that flexibility in my life to always be present in their life. But I also have a goal to bring 100 people through Viva this year and to also be a paid speaker by the time, well, that has become to fruition this year too, but be consistently a paid speaker each month and to also be on a TEDx stage. So it's these things that have become, when I first read the vision of knowing I wanted to speak and knowing I wanted to have the flexibility with my kids, it's interesting how the details have always kind of started come to fruition after I've wrote those down and always revisiting it each year and kind of adding, adding a little bit to it and fine tuning it. Mm -hmm. so. Awesome. 
Love it. Love that. you. And I can't wait to see you on the TEDx stage. You're going to have to send it and share it with us because uh, we'll share it across our network as well. That'll be fun to see you, see you do it. Yeah. Gary. Awesome. <laughs> you know, uh, my vision is largely attached to laurels and always has been, you know, like I told you, I, I um, became an entrepreneur when I was pregnant with her and my son was almost two years old and I stepped out of working the nine to five thing and into being an entrepreneur because I wanted what she she now wants for her family, which was to be home, be present, um, work around their schedule. And I was in the world of network marketing first before I went into being a speaker and a coach. So I was very blessed that during that time that I was raising them, I earned a lot of trips that we went on as a family. That was a big part of our family vision and still is now. So, you know, I see the same thing, Laurel, you know, with her growing family, I want to be as close to her and those grandbabies as possible. So I've created a life where I live half time in Arizona and half time in Oklahoma where she is so that I can do that and so that we can work side by side. And yeah, absolutely. Laurel and I, um, first and foremost, love speaking more than anything. So we're working very hard right now to get up on some bigger stages and um, be known for what we talk about on vision and purpose and really create that movement. Awesome. Awesome. Now, before we transition, because I do have some other questions for you on the vision side, if somebody is watching this or listening to this today and they're like, they kind of, they feel like they know their vision or they, maybe they do know their vision. What is something that you could give them either a tool or something they could do to kind of solidify that? Um, obviously they can come work with you and, and really define that. And maybe if they're not sure, um, maybe you can even share that. Like when's a good time to come to you? When are they ready to really come work with you? And then what's something they could do now before they get to you? I'll let you, know, uh, let you share. Well, the first thing they could do if they wanted to is I uh, wrote a book in 2015. It's a workbook, actually, um, called Vision is Victory. And so if and nothing else, they could just get that and take the workbook and write their vision out because it takes them step by step through that. Super easy to do. Um, but I really tell people, you know, I hope that when you buy the book, you'll actually do it because more times than not, people don't. So we do encourage people to uh, follow Laurel and I because we offer workshops that we do live and recorded so that they will actually take the time to do it, which is why we still do the live coaching versus having it all recorded because we know that most people say they're going to do it and they just don't niche out the time to, to say, okay, today's the day, shutting off my phone, turning off my computer, I'm going to take myself away and I'm going to actually sit down and write it out. We just get distracted too easily. Um, so we encourage people to um, really watch and see when they can maybe plug into something we're doing. So they'll sit and do it. Awesome. Laurel? Yeah, I think with the workshops too, you know, there's the best part about those is that it gives people a chance to come and somewhat work with us and also figure out where they are at with that. You know, there's always something beyond that for us of where if it's a young adult, that's like, yeah, I'm totally ready to be a part of Viva or, or it's somebody that's really wants to dive into group coaching. Those workshops are for people to show up where they're at and then start figuring out, okay, I'm super unclear on my vision or I have a pretty good idea of where it is and I'm ready to set a game plan. Um, so we put those on for almost the rest of the year on our calendar to have just these 90 minute little jam sessions. Cause like my mom said, it's there's people don't really know where they're at. And there's sometimes it's hard to give them all of that prep work if they don't really know how to dive in or space out that time to really figure out how we can help them further. Awesome. Awesome. Well, maybe we can put that in one of the links below um, this as well as our um, podcast. So people that are interested can catch the next uh, session or at least how they can sign up to dive into writing their vision out. Now, I, you guys are mother daughter duo. I have to ask this because I work with my husband. <laughs> how do you guys, you know, many family members, especially during this COVID time, um, wanted to work together? You're with each other. It's like, we probably should be doing something. We're here. <laughs> um, so what would be maybe a tip or how have you guys really empowered each other to work as a mother-daughter duo? And and how's it been going? Should, should I start? <laughs> yeah, go, Laura. <laughs> well, we get starting to get this question a lot. So yeah, I it's pretty funny, which it's a common question because I, I, you know, I, I know it can be hard to work with close friends or family or anything like that, but 
the first thing is, of course, we shared this common mission and we've been through a lot together. So there's that piece mm -hmm. where, you know, there's something so big that we're trying to share and work towards. Um, the other piece of it is, is that we have figured out what our strengths and weaknesses are for each other and figured out how to not ask that of each other in an area that maybe we don't excel as much. So we kind of have found where to utilize our strengths and where the other person maybe should not be working. And it's no fault. It's just different strengths and figuring out what that is. And another piece, like you said, too, if you are together feeling like you should always be working, we try to always approach it of saying, okay, is this a good time for us to talk about this? Are we in a space that we both want to work through this or should we revisit it later because that's definitely easy to do, especially we're in person. I mean, we could sit and work for a straight week on stuff, which, you know, if you want to do that, whatever, but you need to kind of find that balance and approach each other with, okay, is this the time that we're going to work or should we come back to this when we're both in that headspace? Right. It's taken time. I mean, we've had to figure out that structure and balance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought a lot about this. If, we, because of what we've been through, Amanda, there is a, a strong bond there. And um, so we don't, we don't get flustered with the small stuff. So there's that because it's just not a part of our life at all. Um, and we've learned each other's balances. Like Laurel said, she's really, really good at things that I am not. And I lean on her for a lot of that. But I also, because of her family, her growing family, um, there's a lot of, like she said, we've got time blocks of when we work and time blocks when we don't. And, and I, because I'm so close to her family and know my grandson's schedule so well, I know when she's just not available. Mm -hmm. right? So, so we do that, but we also, um, especially when we are in the same state, we make sure that we block in fun time so that we don't work all the time. And, you know, her, her son is our natural buffer around that because we can't work 24 seven with him around. It's just not possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's if, she, if she hadn't had him, we probably could, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't get much done when he's awake. So mm -hmm. there's that. Oh, I love that. I love that. Now, um, obviously, you guys are working together. Thank you for sharing that, because I know that it can be quite insightful. I love that you said you don't really worry about the petty stuff. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of reasons, excuses um, that can come up on why things aren't done, why this isn't done, and really just owning what you're good at. It's just such powerful nuggets. So those listening today, you know, maybe go back and watch again, <laughs> even go back on the, the vision side. Now, our show is all about shifting. And I'd love to know if you could share one shift that comes to mind that has really impacted your life. Because when I started this, I thought, you know, when you have a business, people think, oh, I've never done that. How could I even do that? Mm -hmm. And I've got to learn all this stuff before I get there. But we forgot that we've got all this experience behind us. And a lot of those same tactics and tools and experience will play into a new role. So mm -hmm. um, what shifts have you gone through and what's something you've learned from it? Mm -hmm. Maybe Laura, we'll start with you or Carrie, whichever one wants to go first. Mm -hmm. um, so when I decided to jump in and work with my mom, it was after we had launched the book. I was in the wedding industry for a long time. And when I found out I was having my son and we were launching the book, I could feel a natural shift, if you will, that I was just not meant to be in that space anymore. And so when I stepped in, I thought, okay, I'm going to do some of the back end work. You know, I'm really good at organizing things and had done was an admin assistant, if you will, for a wedding planner for years. So I was like, I'm going to go in there, manage my mom's coaching and speaking and all this kind of stuff and kind of jump here and there with her and speak together. But it started organically happening where I was starting to speak on my own, where I was asked to speak on a young adult summit and share my story and then asked to, you know, be on a podcast with young adults. And it just kind of started organically happening where, you know, we speak together a whole lot. And then it was me starting to speak individually and stepping into that. And like you said, I was like, okay, is this where I'm supposed to be? Am I, you know, do I, am I equipped to speak alone? What does this look like? And so it was a really good shift, but not one that I thought was really going to happen. And maybe as soon as it was happening, but I knew that it was where I was supposed to step into and still obviously be partnered with my mom, but figuring out what that individually looks like for me as well. Awesome. Well, the biggest shift for me, I think, and I mentioned this a minute ago, Amanda, is that my first entrepreneurial gig was in network marketing and was in that for a very long time over 20 years before I 
actually decided to start creating my own content and start uh, leading people um, on vision outside of the walls of my company, right? So a uh, huge shift because that's what I knew and didn't know the speaking and coaching world. And a lot of people scratch their head going, you're, you're going to do what? You, this is what you do. This is who you are. This is, you know, I, I built a huge team. Or like I said, earned all the, the titles and the accolades and everything. And when I decided to expand, I just knew like Laurel, Laurel said, organically, I was, it was time for me to expand. It was time for me to take what I'd been teaching and learning through that journey to the public. So the first thing I had to do was hire a coach because I didn't know that world at all. And I think that that is a huge shift that a lot of people are scared to make. Um, they think, you know, I got this. I, I can watch people on social media and just copy what they're doing. And it doesn't work that way. So a lot of times the big shift for entrepreneurs, I think, is to admit that they need help and to hire the right help. So those are the two things that I really shifted industries. And then I really shifted how I got coached and mentored. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I know that, you know, being in the, a business consultant and a coach myself and man, I have gone through a lot of learning. I've done a lot of different sessions with other people that are experts in their industry, trying to pick and ask them all the questions. Sometimes they're like, okay, you're going to keep asking me questions. <laughs> like, yeah, I just want to grab from you everything I can because there's so many great people out there doing so much great things. And it doesn't mean we're not good. It's just, we can get better. We can craft our hone, our craft so much more um, if we are. So um, definitely reach out to Carrie and Laurel. Um, I've got one more question. If we have some time, I always mm -hmm. like to ask some shifter wisdom and what keeps you on the move. So maybe Carrie, you can take away what keeps you moving. <laughs> well, <laughs> Two things, our big vision, of course, it's, it's a big mission that Laurel and I are on and we are just getting started. We have a very big um, visual of how big we wanna see this get. And like I said, we're just, we're just now starting to move and what keeps me moving is my grandson. <laughs> and chasing after him when I'm with Laurel. Love it, love it. Laurel, what keeps you moving? Yeah, well, he definitely keeps, keeps me busy. <laughs> he's the <Sure>. same one. <laughs> yeah. I'm always sweating. I'm like, I'm so hot because he's just all over the place. But um, what keeps me moving and reminds me of why I'm doing what I'm doing is the conversations that I have with people often. And they always come at the right time of where somebody will say, your story has inspired me or your story has led me to share my own story. And it's always when I need the reassurance of I'm reaching the right people and the story is actually helping people. It always comes at the right time and always from people you would never expect. And so knowing the impact that we're making is, is what keeps me going. I love that. I love it. It's been such a pleasure to have you both on the show. I know those listening today are going to say, how do I get to be a part of Viva? How do I work with you, Kiri? And then even maybe some that are listening are going, you know what? I want them to speak. I want them to come to our company. I want to, you know, we've got this event happening and we'd love to have them come share. So what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? So I have a website, which is just kerryconley.com and Laurel and I are both all over Facebook and, and uh, Instagram. So it's easy to follow us there and yeah, the, go through the website and you'll be able to get connected to me and to Laurel. Awesome. Laurel, do you want to add anything, any Instagram yeah. handles or? Yeah, definitely. So I'm Laurel A. Wilson on Instagram. I'm predominantly on there. I know that's where my generation is all over the place. Um, so I'm on there all the time and chatting with people and being connected that way. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you both for joining me today, sharing your shifts in life and business to keep on the move. We are here live now, weekly, 10 a.m. Central Time. And we also have a live follow-up for those listening today and those that are um, you know, going to listen to this after. We are going to be live Friday, Central Time, 10 a.m., talking about vision. And unfortunately, <laughs> Laurel and Carrie are not going to be able to join us, but we'll bring their energy, we'll bring, bring their heart, their vision into the conversation and hopefully get them sent your way <laughs> so they can come talk to you guys. So we're going to close it out. Thanks for joining us. And for all those listening today, keep on the move. <laughs>